morning and uh, welcome to Destiny Center International Online Message. Memorial Day is a time each year when we pause to remember those who laid down their lives for family, friends, and freedom. One week after the Pearl Harbor attack, President Franklin Roosevelt said, Those who long enjoy such privileges that we enjoy forget in time that others have died to win them. Freedom is never really free. It's almost always bought with the blood of patriots. Today there is a new generation of heroes that we need to remember too. They are the health workers who gave their lives combating a highly contagious disease spreading across the globe and it is called coronavirus. They are doing this to free us from the disease. I liked what Medscape Medical News posted on their website. It is titled, it, it's titled uh, In Memoriam, Health Workers Who Have Died of COVID-19. They will not be forgotten. In their post, they listed the names of those who died from where they are and their positions in the medical field. They are listed in an alphabetical order and as of May 1st, this list includes more than 1,000 names from 64 countries. The youngest is 20 and the oldest is 99. Mabi Aya had been a doctor in India and then trained to become a physician assistant after she immigrated to the United States. She worked long hours in the emergency room of a hospital in Brooklyn that was battered by the coronavirus. Then she caught the virus herself, lying in a hospital bed Mami Aya understood what was happening to her. She died away from her family. While reading her story of how she died, tears began to roll down my cheeks. It is heart-wrenching. And folks, this is only one of their stories. But the biggest battle we are facing today is the battle for the very soul of our nation. We see it all around us every day. The erosion of our society has been a slow process, but we've seen it accelerate, accelerate rapidly in just the past few years. It really doesn't matter whether there's a Democrat or a Republican sitting in the Oval Office, this nation that we've all come to know and love continues to erode. The position we're in today is because of what we tolerated yesterday. And the position we'll be in tomorrow will be because of what we tolerate today. Well, history has a way of repeating itself. In Daniel's day, he saw a lot of what we're seeing today. But his situation was much worse. The fifth chapter of Daniel describes the collapse of a culture. They become so comfortable and secure within the confines of their strongholds. 
but they crumbled from within. We will study the three mistakes Babylon had committed that caused its nation to crumble and collapse. The first reason why Babylon collapsed is because they lost all sense of remembrance. You can read that in Daniel chapter 5 verses 18 to 23 and it says your majesty the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor because of the high position he gave him all the nations and peoples of every language dreaded and feared him those the king wanted to put to death he put to death those he wanted to spare he spared those he wanted to promote he promoted and those he wanted to humble he humbled verse 20 but when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory he was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal he lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like an ox and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the most high god is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and sets over them anyone he wishes verse 22 but you belshazzar his son have not humbled yourself though you knew all this instead you have set yourself up against the lord of heaven you had the goblets from his temple brought to you and you and your nobles your wives and your concubines drank wine from them you praised the gods of silver and gold of bronze iron wood and stone which cannot see or hear or understand but you did not honor the god who holds in his hand your life and all your ways belshazzar's problem was the same as many people have today he had forgotten some of the valuable lessons from the past lessons like his predecessor his father Nebuchadnezzar had learned the hard way lessons like those who walk in pride God is able to put down Daniel chapter 4 verse 37 now in most cases pride always comes before destruction Daniel gives us an important insight when he challenges the king with the accusation that you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. That's what Belshazzar was doing, boasting about himself. He picked up right where King Nebuchadnezzar left off, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Daniel chapter 4 verse 30 pride always leads to a fall it's right up there at the top of the list of those things which God despises if you don't want to take my word for it just ask Satan ask Adam and Eve ask King David ask Simon Peter yes those who walk in pride god is able to put down america used to honor god unashamedly and openly it is at in numerous monuments all over the nation's capital it is carved in granite on many of the government buildings we hold dear 
It is printed in our currency. There was a time when we credited him with our blessings and our successes and turned to him in our trials and our losses. But today, like Babylon, we seem to have lost a sense of remembrance. President Woodrow Wilson said it best. A nation that does not remember what it was yesterday does not know what it is today or what it is trying to do. We are about a futile thing if we do not know where we came from or what we have been about. In many ways, we've forgotten our past. What was it about America that made us so great and caused men and women from all nations all around the world to risk their lives and fortunes to come here? Is there something about America that distinguishes us from our neighbors to the north and south? Canada was settled by French explorers who were looking for gold. Mexico was settled by Spanish explorers who were also looking for gold. America was settled by men and women who came here primarily looking for God. They came searching for a home where God could be exalted and worshipped in spirit, freedom, and truth. We've fallen, a lo we've fallen a long way from where we once were. We've gotten so far off our founder's path that it's not uncommon to see the federal courts repeatedly doing such things such as restricting major sins from city squares and removing Ten Commandment displays from government buildings. Unfortunately, there are some sobering similarities between ancient Babylon and modern-day America. And just like Babylon, there is an expensive price to pay when a nation loses all sense of remembrance of who they are and where they've come from. The reason why Babylon collapsed is because they lost all sense of reality. Daniel chapter 5 verse 1 says, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. In order to understand how the king had lost all sense of reality around him, we need to remember that outside the city walls of Babylon, the Medes and the Persians surrounded the city. But inside, Belshazzar is partying. The Babylonians thought that because of their history of dominance and their strong walls, they were invincible and indestructible. Those walls stretch for 60 miles in circumference. Everywhere you looked beyond them, you could see the enemy surrounding the city. But no problem, they thought. After all, the walls were so high and thick, they were impossible to penetrate. And on top of that, they have a 20-year supply of race rations laying inside. So what did Belshazzar do? He lost all sense of reality. He threw a big party and invited thousands of guests when destruction was at his door. When we begin to feel secure in our own strength, danger is just on the other side of the wall. 
Many people today think that just because they got away with something before, they'll get away with it again. This king was too blind and drunk on his own success to realize that the strength of a kingdom or an individual is never on the outside but on the inside. Babylon soon fell because they had become corrupt on the inside with no more sense of remembrance or reality. Like those in ancient Babylon, we too think that we're invincible. But remember, there was a time when Israel was the world's only superpower. They were one nation under God, and their motto was, In God we trust. 3,000 years later, God gave birth to another nation. God gave America a law built and based on Israel's ancient commandments. Why should we think we are invincible? I think that now, more than ever, it's time for us to remember who we are and where we've come from. I think it's time for us to look at the reality of what's go going around us and truly pray, God forgive us and God bless America. The third reason why Babylon collapsed is because they lost all sense of respect. Daniel chapter 5 verses 3 and 4 says, So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood and stone. Here we see the crumbling culture of Babylon. Nothing was sacred to them anymore. They had abandoned all absolutes. They, there is no respect for anything that is sacred. Belshazzar gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and the nobles, his wives and his concubines, might drink from them. It was party time in Babylon. Then an amazing thing happened. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, of iron, wood and stone, Verse 5 says, suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. The king's face turned pale and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees knocked against each other. So what happened next? Daniel comes into the party hall. Daniel was not in the party. He was summoned by the king. And as Daniel looked around, a strange silence filled the banquet hall. People looked as if they were in uh, they were frozen in time. The sacred vessels were scattered around the tables. Now listen as Daniel stands before them and revealed the handwriting on the wall because nobody can read it. Daniel translated the writings and said in verse 25, many, many Tackle you parson. And here is what these words mean. Many, meaning God 
has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. And verse 28, Paris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Words, God is saying, Belshazzar, your numbers, or your days are numbered. Judgment is coming and you will be separated from God from, uh, for eternity. The fifth chapter of Daniel concludes with these words. That very night, verses 30 to 31, Belshazzar was slain and Darius the Mede received the kingdom. That very night, while Babylon had parted with no sense of remembrance, with no sense of reality and respect, the armies of the Medes and the Persians diverted the Euphrates into swampland and they marched right into the city through the dry riverbed that ran under the city walls and took the city. God's judgment is certain. There is not a wall high enough or thick enough to prevent a person or a nation from falling when God writes many tekel you parsing on the wall. When we forget to honor the God who holds in his hands our lives and all our ways, we become blind to the fact that like Babylon, our problems are not primarily political, economic, or social. The decline of any nation stems from spiritual factors. Everything else is just symptomatic. There's a last night for every nation and for every individual. We need to have a sense of urgency in listening to the writings on the wall. Our days are indeed numbered. I will close with this on this Memorial Day as we remember those who gave so much for the freedoms we enjoy today may we be reminded more importantly that Christ paid dearly too for our freedom a freedom that no human means can attain Christ gave his life so we will attain Freedom, both from sin and eternal punishment. And only by believing and receiving Him as our Lord and Savior can we attain this freedom. There will be no real freedom unless we invite the Lord Jesus to reign in our hearts. And if you're willing, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died for my sin. You died on the cross and rose again. Forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Take charge of my life and make me the person you want me to be. Cleanse me with your precious blood. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Be assured that if you have prayed this, the Lord will honor your prayer. Happy Memorial Day and may God bless America.